Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We thank the Lord for who he is and his awesome power. Hope everyone is doing well on this Wednesday morning. Happy Veterans Day to you all. Hope you have great plans to celebrate the sacrifice of our troops and those who remain amongst us. Make sure if you see a troop today, you thank them for their service to our country. This morning, I don't plan on keeping you on long, but I want to I want to ask you two questions and then I'm going to lead us in prayer and give you back your your Wednesday. Um, so good morning to you all for great is our God and greatly to be praised. Um, I want to ask you two questions this morning and then I'm going to give you your day back. Here are your two questions at the outset. So for the last eight months, um, our country, our states and our cities have been impacted by this coronavirus. Um, our normal has been abnormal. And I would even submit to you that our normal will no longer be normal when this is all over. Uh, many of us are finding ourselves now um, having to do things differently than you were used to doing. And so you find yourself now, you're allowed to work from home, some of you on your job or your church is doing things virtually, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the two questions I want to ask you over the last eight months, the last eight months, what have you learned about yourself and what have you learned about your God? Again, what have you learned about yourself and what have you learned about your God? For the last eight months, everyone who's listening to and logged into this prayer call has been impacted one way or another. You have found yourself in a situation where things just aren't like they used to be. When the year opened up, none of us foresaw this taking place. And now we see ourselves in the month of November having looked back on when all this first happened and how it was either downplayed and none of us really took this as serious as it has become. But everything that we had planned for the year had been upended. And for some of us, we love challenges and we do better when the fire is turned up hotter upon us. That's some of us. For others, you can't handle the unpredictable. Your life is mapped out from point A to point B. Every five years, you have your life mapped out in those incremental years. And this year has really thrown you off. You've had a hard time because you are so itinerant that you have had a hard time keeping things abreast. So again, what have you learned about yourself? Good and or bad. And then what have you learned about God over these last eight months? About yourself is important because if you haven't learned you over these last eight months, that is dangerous. But also if you haven't learned um, that you can withstand, then that's also dangerous. There are things that you and I have endured over the last eight months that have surprised us. There are things that have been thrown against you that you've actually stood firm. You didn't buckle under pressure. You didn't fold. You didn't walk away. You didn't run away. You didn't throw in the towel, but you stood. There are friendships that you've lost and some you've gained. There are relationships that have ended and some have begun. There are things that you thought were years off that have been drawn closer over these last eight months. Not sure if you know it, but in biblical numerology, the number eight is a number for abundance or new beginnings. And so when you think about it, we're eight months in. And in these eight months that we are in, you should you should be seeing some new things taking place. You should see yourself new and newer. You should you should see life differently. There are things that before all this took place, you felt like you had to have in your life. There were people, there were places, there were things that you felt like you could not live unless you had those things. And these last eight months have proven to you that you really can survive without these things. 
as a pastor, there are things that I have noticed that our church has been doing over our 10 years of existence that much as I've enjoyed doing them, we don't need to do them. Um, you, when you get down to the core of our fellowship and the core of my pastoral responsibility, my responsibility is to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Other things are additions, right? We love to have praise and worship. We love to have fellowship. We love to raise offerings. We love to, you know, do the announcements and, and sketches and things of that nature. But the bulk of that is excess. It's, it's, it's extra. It's not a necessity for it. The preaching and the teaching of the message of Christ is what leads people to Christ and saves souls. And so at the core of what we do, I've learned over the last eight months, there are things that we need to cut out. We've been able to have full church service without hindering the Holy Spirit in an hour and five minutes most Sundays, if not all the Sundays we've had virtually. And no one has been shortchanged because we've learned over these last eight months, you know, to keep the main thing the main thing. About yourself, what have you learned over these last eight months? Who have you seen differently? What have you seen differently? How are you seeing things differently? Because my prayer and hope for you is that you will not, you will not come out of this season that we're in and be the same person you are, you were when you went in. You should see some growth. You should see some change. Things ought not stress you out as they used to. People ought not get on your nerves like they used to. You ought to be able, my brother and my sister, to be able to smile and laugh at things that used to really frustrate you. You ought to be able to see the mess in people's personalities and it not frustrate you any longer, but it, it causes you to pray. Months ago, I did a prayer call and or an exhortation. I talked about the difference between bitter and better. This is really one vow. If you change the I in bitter and make it an E, you are better. If you remove that E and make it an I, you are bitter. One vow changes the meaning, the purpose, and the intent of a word. And I say to you this morning that if you're not learning you, then you're really not trying to grow. Now, the greater question is, what have you learned about God over these last eight months? Because I'm going to tell you, here's the thing I've been saying to our church. I've been saying this very, very genuinely to people. Who are we to tell God what he can do? Who are we to tell God what he can do? Do you understand that God does not need your permission to be God? When you woke up this morning, he was God. When you go about your day, he'll be God. When you lay down tonight, he'll be God. Before you acknowledged him, he was God. If you discontinue acknowledging him, he'll still be God. And so what I've learned over these last eight months is, is that God is still in full control. Yeah, things are unusual. They're uncomfortable. It's hard to really explain some of the stuff that's happening, but it does not mean that God is hindered. You do understand that this caught us off guard, it did not catch God off guard. I learned about God this year that God honors his word, that, that God holds fast to his promises. I've learned that God loves his people. I've learned over these last eight months that, that God will slow you down so you can see that he's up, that he'll slow you down, that you may see that he's up. What does that mean? That sometimes we, we become so hurried in what we do that we miss who God is because we're so dependent on who we are. But when God slows you down, you realize, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. But I definitely need you. Definitely need you. I've seen God bless people who are connected to our local church in an amazing way. People who've been able to buy homes in this season, pay off debt in this season, see miracles of healing and deliverance in this season. When there are other people complaining and griping and moaning because their normal is abnormal, I've seen God do great things. So who are we to tell God what God can do? But the question is, what have you seen about God? What have you learned about God over these last eight months? And my prayer is that you've learned that God honors his word, that, that, that God keeps his promises. Numbers 23, 19 says, God, not a man that he should lie, neither son of man that he shall repent. If he said it, shall he not do it? And if he spoke it, will he not bring it to pass? Do you understand that God is so confident in himself that he would, he would challenge you to challenge him? 
You understand what I'm telling you now? God is so confident in himself. God is so honoring of his word that he dares us to challenge him because he knows he's going to honor his word. Try me and see if I want to open windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. In the book of Malachi 3, the Lord is asking that. If you look about Romans, Paul asks a question. If God before us, who? It's, it's a bold question to ask. If God is for you, who will stand against you? It's not even about you. It's asking who has enough audacity to stand before your God? So the question again is, what have you learned about yourself over the last month, eight months? But most importantly, what have you learned about God over the last eight months? Because I'm telling you that God is doing great things even in your life over these last eight months. Now, it may not be a brand new car and a brand new house and a promotion on your job, but man, you're breathing. You hear what I'm telling you? If you can, that's God. Because there is someone that's no longer able to do what I just did. You hear what I'm telling you? There's someone you know. The Bible says in Psalm 150, verse number six, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you are able to breathe this morning, praise is required of you unto God. I've learned over these last eight months that God still inhabits the praises of his people, that God still expects us to wake up with a with a with an attitude of gratitude and a heart of thanksgiving. He still expects it because he hasn't ceased from doing what he's been doing. There are people who've seen their jobs cut their hours. There are people that, that they, they've been furloughed and their jobs are now reopening back up and they haven't gotten that phone call. There, there are parents who have who gone from being full-time employees to full-time home workers and full-time teachers at home. And God has been sustaining you, been sustaining you. That God has been able to, to, to sustain you and stretch that your resources. What have you seen about God? What have you learned about God with the last eight months? Because the other thing that you learn is, is there's a lot of things that we've been doing in our lives that aren't pleasing to God, but also they aren't necessary to get to God. Lord have mercy. There are things that when you grow up in church, as I have, there's a lot of cliches that you hear that really aren't scriptural, but they're also, they're actually blockages to get to God. You know, sometimes man will create all of these, these acrobatic ways you got to get to God. That's not what scripture says. And yet we've made it so hard for people to penetrate and get to God because they got to go through this and go through this and go through this. They got to dress a certain way, look a certain way, park a certain way, have a certain amount of money. They got to, they got to, you know, sit in certain part of the church section, all the type of stuff. And the Lord is saying, all these barriers are preventing you to get from getting to me. So I hope over the last eight months that you've seen that a God who sits high, he still looks low, that he's still fully aware of everyday matters that you are experiencing. You do understand that God still is concerned about you and about me. You do understand that God knows the very hairs on your head. They're all numbered. As Pastor Walker would always tell us, my, my father in the ministry, he would always say, if you and you get a haircut, God can tell you which particle of hair fell down by number. That's how much God knows about you. Do you understand what I'm telling you? That God is fully aware of everything pertaining to your life. So I pray that what we've learned about God over the last eight months is that he is God. He is God. And the blessing about him being God is he doesn't need your permission nor my permission to be God. He is God. And so today, as you look at things through a different lens now, I pray that you look through the lens of realizing that, the, that my father, who's rich in houses and land, he holds the whole world in the palm of his hand. That there is nothing that God is unable to do. Now, yes, we can slow down what God wants to do by our disobedience and, and we can miss the, what God wants to do by our unwillingness to acknowledge him. But, but even in those acts, it won't cease him from being God. It won't cease him from being God. If anything, it, it affects you, but he's still God. He is still God. And I want us to know this, brothers and sisters. I want us to know that you can still approach the throne of grace. You can still come to your father. You can still receive from your father. He wants you. And he wants me. And I've learned about God over the last eight months is he loves me. He absolutely loves me and he loves you too. And so this morning, my, my plan was not to get on here and spend a long time, but I really just want to just, 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 just provoke thought today. 
I want you to think today of two questions. The first question is, over these last eight months, from March, when this coronavirus really, really started impacting our country, to the current, what have you learned about yourself? And then secondly, and most importantly, what have you learned about God? What have you learned about God? This is this could be your new beginning. Eight is the number of new beginning and abundance. This could be your season of new beginning where you can start seeing things differently. Because I'm telling you, I'm not waiting until this is this all subsides. I'm not waiting for the Pfizer vaccine to actually be available and, in, 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 instrumental. And I'm not waiting for that. I'm not waiting for that to then say I'm, I'm getting myself together. No, no, no. I'm actually taking dutiful notes. I'm actually putting things in place. I'm actually writing out what God is saying to me in this season. I'm actually making moves, not announcements now so that when God says go, I've already had the blueprint written out based on what he gave me. So you, 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 you can't be the person that says when this is over, then I'll do because you'll never do. You need to be using this season, this time to be taking dutiful notes, hearing from God clearly. Because here's the thing now, because everything is slower, you ought to have a, your ear ought to be wider in his hearing to where God is saying. Because God has slowed down your routine, he slowed down your normal, you should be able to hear God's voice clearer now. You need to be writing down what God is telling you to do. Because when God tells you to go, listen to me now, when God tells you to go, you can't say, I'm not ready. This could be your season of preparation your season of, of, of equipping so that when God said it's time to move, you're ready to move. You're ready to move. Be, be, be slow and tell me what you're going to do and make preparations to be doing those things. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Duty for notes. God, I hear what you're saying. I'm writing this thing down. May not make sense to you right now. Doesn't matter. If God said it, write it down. On this date, God said this. And I can assure you of this. At some point in the future, you're going to look back on that day and you're going to realize that God kept his promise. There were things that God said to me in 2006, all the way up to the current that made no sense. But I, I, I held fast to what God was saying. It made no sense at all. I mean, it was dumbfounding. I didn't tell anybody because it didn't make sense to me. So I really couldn't relay it to them. And now I'm seeing that God does not waste his words, but he keeps his promises. Are you hear what I'm telling you? This is your season of preparation. You ought to be writing things down. You ought to be preparing yourself. You ought to be equipping yourself. Don't wait until January to decide you want to get a membership at a gym to lose weight. No, use this season now to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself now. Educate yourself on that which you want to be doing. All right? All right? Understand this now. Sit yourself in a chair and become a student so that when it's time for you to be put in front of people to teach them, you have some, something in you to teach. God is still speaking in this season. God is still blessing in this season. God is still equipping in this season. God is still God in this season. So stand up right. Hold your head up. Look up to God and realize he's still in charge. I pray God will bless you on this Wednesday. I pray that you, my brother and my sister, will be unashamed and unapologetic. It is time out. It is time out for us missing what God is doing, but also time out for us not growing, right? We need to be growing. We need to be growing. For those of you saying, man, I'm going through a, a wilderness experience, that's the best time to grow. The best time to grow is when you're in a wilderness experience. When, when everything around you seems dry, yeah, that's when you're really going to see the hand of God moving mildly on your behalf. And here is why. Because everybody else has vacated the premises. So you know any provision you get in your wilderness, you know God made it possible. Because most people are not going to stick around when you dry up. They're not. They're going to rip around. They're going to run. They'll come back later, but they're not going to stay in the dry season. So whatever you get poured down on you in the, in the dry season, you know God provided it. This is your season. This is your time of equipping, of preparing. So spend less time. Spend less time talking about, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do No, no, no. Make preparations. Plan it out. And watch what God does. Watch what God does even in this season. There's somebody close to you. There's somebody close to you who can testify, man, I've seen God do some things over the last eight months, some things. And it may not be, again, it may not be materialistic. They can say, man, God has given me so much supernatural peace, things that I was worried about. I'm just not worried about them no more. This is going to work itself out. So let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Thank you for, again, the, the chance to be able to spend this amount of time with these, your beloved. 
I pray over these last eight months, oh God, that we can look and say, I've learned this about myself, but most importantly, I've learned this about God. And what I've learned is you are still God. And there is nothing that is happening in our world, in our country, in our states, in our cities that is unbeknownst to you, nor is it hindering unto you. You are God. You are fully aware. You were fully aware. And nothing takes place that you are not aware of. So, Lord, I ask now in the name of Jesus that if you, oh God, would, according to your will, that you will continue to reveal yourself to us, your people. This is the confidence that we have. We ask anything in your name according to your will. Your word says you hear us. So, Father, it is my prayer that we will look into the hills from what cometh our help, knowing that all of our help comes from you, the Lord God. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege to be able to learn more about you. Thank you for letting us see that you are still God, threatened by nothing, in charge of everything. So we, oh God, we honor you. I pray for my brother and my sister right now. I pray for them who felt like throwing in the towel. They felt like giving up. I pray, oh God, that this prayer and that this word would, would get to them. Whether they're on now or they'll hear about this later, oh God, it will penetrate their heart and it will shake them into the realization that you're still in charge. They can't control when it's going to happen, but they need to rest in the faith of knowing that it's going to happen because you are in charge. Father, we lift our hands to you and say, Lord, have thine own way, for you are the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and make us as you desire, oh God. We thank you. Hey, we're going to see things differently. We're going to start looking at things through the lenses of heaven, not from the place of earth. That we're going to see that you, even in the midst of what's going on, you're still doing some things. Help us to ready our hands and ready our feet to do the work that we're required of us and not wait for a future date to be doing what we can be doing now. Thank you for those who served our military. Thank you for their sacrifice, their commitment. We pray for them on this Veterans Day, oh God, that they will continue to be honored for the sacrifice they've committed and they've rendered, oh God. But we give all glory, all honor, and all praise unto you. Bless your people in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Pray again, God's blessing on you on this Wednesday. Listen, before you sign off, in lieu of our Wednesday and the Word tonight at 7 o'clock p.m., I've been instructed by the Spirit of God to not teach a Bible study, but I'm going to be on a 7 o'clock leading intercessory prayer. I'll be on this same live stream. And so members of our church, if you have a prayer request, please email it to the church um, email account. We'll make sure that we call that out during prayer at 7 o'clock. But at 7 o'clock p.m., I'll be back on live through our Zoom, through our social media platforms to make sure uh, that we're going to lead prayer at 7 o'clock p.m. this evening. We're going to be praying for our country and all that's going on with this, the post-election, praying for our pastors around the world, praying for you, God's people. Um, in our city of Tallahassee, there's been stories coming out about this yesterday. I read uh, how there, the increase of suicides this year compared to last year's number. The increase. We're we're in the double digits, almost at 20 suicides, and and coronavirus actually has been a contributor to that because people have been isolated from each other. It's impacting mental health. We want to be praying for that, but also want to pray for you. And so, if you have something that you want us to call out in prayer at seven o'clock p.m. tonight, I'm asking you by six thirty p.m. Please email that to the church account. We want to make sure that we call that out. I don't have to call your name out to call out your requests. So if you want to keep it confidential, I honor your confidentiality. I can still call out what you're asking prayer for without actually mentioning it's associated with you. I have to obey God. And so we're going to be back on at 7 o'clock. Please share the word with other people. And remember this now. When I ask you to share, this is not for my ego. It's never been. This is a chance to be able to be a blessing to other people. Right. That's what it's all about. So I ask you to share this on your platforms and tell other people about it. I'm not counting numbers. Most times I'm not, even looking, I'm not even looking at the numbers. I'm looking to be a blessing to God's people for God's glory. So always know that. But please, 7 o'clock p.m., we're back on live leading prayer. Uh, I'm not planning on being on here for an hour, but I want to be obedient to what God says. And so please, sir, please, man, if you have a prayer request, please email it to our church email account. Um, by 6.30 p.m. this evening, we'll be on live at 7 o'clock to lead prayer. Be praying that God will do what God desires to do. All right. God bless you all. Have a great, great Wednesday. And remember always, don't just be blessed. Live blessed.